Okay, in this video, we're gonna go over some structured feeding tips. Um, for dogs, most people don't realize for dogs, eating is the most important activity they participate in. A lot of people do what's called free feeding. This family does not. But a lot of people do free feeding, they leave food in the bowl at all times. Well, because eating is such a primarily important activity, they spend 90% of their time in the wild looking for food. So when they do find or kill or capture something, they eat in the order of the rank. The leader group eats first, then the next group, and the next group, and the next group. So when we have dogs living with us, one of the easiest tricks that we can, or tips that we can do as a dog, using a little dog psychology, is, well, I guess not dogs, dog behavior, is to actually feed them in the order of the rank with the leader eating first. Now, a lot of people tell me, like, this dog is the leader, this dog is the leader, no. We are the leader as humans. Now, most of us have such busy schedules, we're not actually gonna eat breakfast at home. We're gonna eat it on the way to work or at work. So the dog doesn't see us eating. If the dog doesn't see us eating before them, they're like, wow, you have no status, why should I listen to you? And for the most important thing in life. So basically what we wanna do is if you're gonna eat at uh, somewhere else or uh, at work or on the way to work, all you gotta do is eat something in five more bites. So I'm gonna have the guardian feeding the dogs. I'm gonna show you guys how to escort them out of the kitchen and then how to have them come and eat one at a time. For dogs to be within seven feet of someone or something that has a high value item like a bone or food or a bully stick or something like that, then that's a way of challenging for it. So the first thing we're gonna do is make all the dogs leave and then when the, when the human's gonna be in here eating by herself and then she's gonna invite the oldest dog in first and that dog's gonna eat and then she'll tell the dog the command word, we'll talk about that in a sec. And when that dog's eating, the other two dogs are not allowed to end. So this way the dogs practice, there's nothing, there's no gate, gate or barricade there. Now, a quick side note, where we're filming from is another doorway of the kitchen, and we have this one blocked off. So if you're doing this at home at yourself and you have two doorways, block one of them off temporarily while you establish this behavior. Now, um, as a dog psychologist, I like to be as force-free as possible. So I can reverse herd them, which I will show you how to do in a second, but before we do that, I usually like to first get the dog to voluntarily do what I want it to do. And the easiest way to do that is to teach your dog an out command. So I have about four treats in my hand here, and I'm gonna show you how to uh, go out with probably with her, and they'll all probably go out. So I'm gonna take one of these treats, I'm gonna split her in half, and I'm gonna toss it just about three feet outside the door. And I say out when the dog licks it up. And then the dog usually comes back in, I'm going to toss the it's about three feet on that one. There we go. Now, they're not sure what's going on right here. There we go. She's, there we go. So he's going to find it with his nose. Out. Well, she found it. So the idea is you go to every room in your house, you take one of these uh, tricky trainer or a soft meat treat, tear it in half, touch the dog's nose with it, and throw it about two feet outside, three feet outside. They look out and get it. We say the word out. Then we let them come back in, we do it again. And we do it for every doorway or area in our home that we want the dog to move away from. One of the things is the dog should be within, uh, like in the living room, there's carpet. So I say the rule is the dog's not allowed to be on the carpet when humans are eating there. So I might go on the carpet and throw it off the carpet this way, off the carpet that way, off the carpet that way. So the dogs learn out, mean, off, out means this way, that way, that way. It just means to go off the carpet. Once I've done all the rooms in the house twice, then I reverse it and I would stand outside here and I toss one treat inside and I would say kitchen when they lick up the treats in here. Living room, there, den, study. Uh, they have a herbarium outside. No, I'm just kidding. But you wanna uh, come, come up with a funny command word for each room. So this way you can direct the dog. I want you to go to that room or I want you to leave this room. So I always want the dog to voluntarily have the ability to do what I want. They might not always want to, but at least we have created a vocabulary so they want to. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to reverse herd the dogs out of the room. When that's the case, then the guardian's gonna prepare the food and she's gonna put the food down. Now when you put the food down, if you have multiple dogs like this house does, they're, they're gonna come in and eat one at a time and you wanna put the dog who's gonna eat first, their bowl should be closest to the entryway. I don't want a dog to walk past a bowl of food to get to their bowl of food. Now I'm gonna start off going by, by age. So we have uh, Daisy, Abigail, and then um, Bucky. Um, my neurons are kicking in. So basically, um, I'm gonna feed them in the order of the rank based on their uh, age to begin with. But let's say that I'm feeding, I feed Daisy first and um, Abigail is being a pill. She keeps on crossing the threshold, she's barking and whining, and he's being a good boy and staying back there. Well, she might lose her rank and I might invite him in next. Now, when that's the case, you're gonna have to shepherd him past her bowl, you're not gonna move the bowl. And wherever you put the bowls down, try to keep them in there in, a, in a, the same position. Um, now that I think about it, I would probably do it a little bit differently because you want to leave the bowls down all the time. Now these are bigger bowls, you get smaller bowls, but I usually like to put them under the lip so you can put one there, one there, and one in the corner, 
and that way they're going here, they're going there, and it's kind of out of your way right now. With that where we're going to put it, where we're going to put it before, might have made it a little bit of a problem. Uh, okay, because I want them to walk by and see the bowl's empty. The bowl's empty. The bowl's empty. Oh, there's food in the bowl. That's a very special time. And so that way it makes the food more valuable. Now, did any of the dogs uh, take a bite of food, uh, a mouthful of food, and go over here and drop it on the ground and eat it? Okay, great. So I have a way to fix that, but if we don't have that, it's a problem. Now, we talked about the escalating consequences I like to use to disagree with unwanted dog behaviors uh, and communicate with dogs off camera. I'm going to use the third escalating consequence to what I call reverse herd the dog out of the room. Dogs. Now, since we have three dogs, I'm going to focus on one dog at a time, and that dog is going to get my full attention. I'm going to ignore the second dog uh, and the third dog. Now, your authority goes whatever direction your hips are pointing. So if I get the dog here, I'm going to get the dog get in front of the dog, and I'm going to walk towards the dog. You'll see me do it in a sec, and, and don't let him go past you. And then once we get to the line, I'm going to stop and wait for that dog to stop. <coughs> then I take a step back. Now, if that dog tries to come in, I'm going to go rush back to the dog. And this is going to go back and forth, back and forth. You need to be quiet. We don't want to wake the baby. Um, and eventually, when that dog stays still, then let's say the second dog is here, I'm going to keep my hips pointed here. So it's pointed at this dog and get behind this dog. So now it's pointed at both dogs and make this dog. I'm going to go ahead and do it with her. She sat down, so I take a step back. The other dogs might grumble about it because they're really excited to eat. And we're going to let them, and, and, and we have mom not wanting to be waking up. But ideally, we would not disagree because that's going to confuse them and think that gets excited. They see she's trying to come in here. She doesn't understand. These dogs are in here having to be kind of wild. Yeah. 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 Yeah, she's, she's the most vocal. I'm going to come over and try it well. So this is what I would normally say, ow. If we knew the command word. So I'm going to do something like this. All right, that's it. Now, they don't know any better, so they're going to try to come in. So I have to stay here and wait. And if you have a wide entry point, you might do something like this to create a bit of more of a choke point. And we have somebody at work. Right. I'll go ahead and feed them. You go ahead and do this. So this will be a production at first, but after you do it for about a week or two, the dogs will kind of fall in the line. All right, so now they're away from the door and they're distracted, so I take a step backwards. And don't let, as soon as they cross the threshold, you're going to rush at them until they cross the threshold. I take a step backwards, so I pause. And don't slow down, and don't think you're being mean. You're not. We're just assigning a boundary. So then, uh, then what I would like to, then what we're going to do is we're going to feed them. So I'm going to grab the bowls, and I'm going to start with the ball, the dog that's going to be furthest away from the area. And you see that surge of excitement just because that movement means the food is about to come out. I'm really excited. All right, can you tell me what the, what, how she gets? Bucky gets a cup, the big, big scoop. Okay. Now when I do this, I usually like to kind of cascade it in and make it so they really hear it. Take a step back and I pause. Step back. Now I'm going to put his bowl, he's going to be the last to eat. So I'm going to hit, put his bowl as far away from the other dogs. And I pause, I pause in between and stop. And as soon as the dog comes in, I stop what I'm doing and I rush towards the dog. Again, they don't understand this yet, so they're going to try to come and go. That's very natural. And I pause between each step to let the dog know I'm not just meandering. So if I start moving towards him, as soon as he gets off the, off the, off, across the boundary, then he's safe. Like it's a game of tag. I pause. Now, the, the more aggressive is not the word I really like using, but the more assertive and qu quick movement is going to sell it. If you're soft, they'll push further. So I'd rather you be more aggressive in your movements without actually contacting them, moving towards them to give them a kind of flinching experience. Okay, the second, um, so this is, uh, this is, is this Daisy's? That's Abby's. This is Abby's, okay. She gets a small scoop? The small scoop, she gets uh, three-fourths of it. Okay. Uh, 
Hers is going to go actually. So don't remember you're good. You're hiss. She's across the line, but she's respecting the spirit of law. And how about uh, Daisy? Two thirds. All right. She just SIT. Daisy is a smart chance. So her bowl is going to go closest because she's going to eat first, which is the, the leadership position out of the dog's hierarchy. Now, if I stand right here, I'm blocking the guard this. I want them to, uh, to uh, respect this authority on my own. So I'm going to move this a little bit back, a little bit bigger. Dogs eat in the order of the rank. So the human who's feeding needs to eat something first. I'm going to simulate it. Don't simulate it at home uh, for when you're doing this because this is not my stuff, so I don't want to reach in here. So I basically reach in and I grab a chip or cracker, something I can eat in five more bites. If you're going to eat a real meal, that's even better. There's food on the ground. Now these guardians have done a good job of actually teaching dogs they can't eat until they get a command order. So this will be a little bit easier for a lot of people than it would. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to have, when you're doing this, again, you'll do a waltz back and forth. Big step, pause. Big step, pause. Big step, if you can, wait for the dogs to stop moving before you take your step backwards. Then I'd lean against the counter where I'm not blocking the food, and then I would eat five more bites of whatever I want to eat, or more if you want, but at least five bites. And I don't want you to be in between the dog and its food. I want nothing but air. And if they SIT, stepping backwards right after the SIT is always a, a good thing to do. All right, so I lean back here, pretend I, I would actually really eat. Now we're gonna feed the dogs and we came up with three command words of favorite restaurants. I'd like to give each dog a unique command word to eat. So who, she's gonna be first. Oh, so where are you gonna feed the blue dog? What is her command word gonna to be to eat? Run time. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna invite her in. I'm gonna let her pass me, but not the other dogs. Now the dogs are only fed downstairs, so this is a completely new room, so this might be a little bit harder for them. She might not know exactly what's up. Now, what I, the way I'm going to sign the command word is as soon as she takes her first bite of food, I'm going to say the command word. You can see me in the camera? Mm -hmm. Okay. Daisy. Daisy. Now, see how she's going slow? She's not going to know what's going on. So Daisy. Normally, I don't like to handle them like this, but I want to make sure that I get the point across. Now, they're used to eating all at the same time, so this is different. Now, normally what I would have said is Runza, and I guess I can say it now, Runza. So what I want to do is I want to say when she takes her first bite of food, I'm going to say her command word. The context, when she hears the word Runza, there's food in her mouth. Runza means I eat. He hears Runza, there's no food in his mouth. Runza does not mean I eat to him. So while I'm doing this, I would like to ideally be standing right there where I was eating the food. But at first, you'll probably have to block or be closer to block. But you, as you practice as you do, we get further and further away. Eventually, the alignment have to be in the room. Now, I use the hissing sound to disagree. The only time I don't use it is when we're feeding, because I don't want her to hear a hiss and think, Psst. we're talking to her, unless it's like that. So now she has to leave the area. And this is where, if you have a good outcome in it, you can tell them out after they practice it. When you practice the out, do it with it with any food. Um, yeah. 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 What's her word? Valentinos. 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 So when she hears the first, uh, hears Valentinos, she's got food in her mouth. When the other dogs hear Valentinos, there's no food in the mouth. Now try to step back. And the guardian actually, who works with dogs and other animals, uh, said that he was going to be the difficult one, and he is. So he knows this stuff. Now, make sure you pause between your step like this, and make sure you keep your hips pointed at the dog the whole time, the one that's challenging you. If it sits or lies down, immediately take a big step backwards. When it SITs you, take a big step backwards. That's your way of saying, because you SIT, I moved myself further away from blocking. Now, this will take a little bit more time at first. I have four dogs though. I say butts, 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 four of them put their, three of them put their butts in the corner, one of them eats, I leave the room. And if I forget to feed one of them, he'll sit in here for two hours waiting for permission to eat his food and un, with no supervision. All right, so now she's done. And when, she, and when each one of these dogs is eating, 
Nobody else is allowed. And this is why I let them, where I feed them, put the bowls down in this order, so that she can't go to somebody else's bowl. Out. Out. So she's getting it, and now I, I can't just let him go because he came across the boundary without permission. And what's his word going to be? Who uh, hot? Who hot? Who hot? That's right. All right. I've been meaning to eat at it. I've never actually tried. Is it good? All right, I'll give him a thumbs up. It's going to back away. She sat down. I take a big step backwards. And back to my position here. So I'm not physically blocking. I'm projecting my authority there, but I'm not actually doing it. And that's the way he gets to eat. He doesn't have to watch his back. She gets to eat. She doesn't have to watch her six. Same thing with Daisy. And like I said, at first, this will take you a little bit of time. But after And make sure you have good... Observance. If you're not across the threshold, you don't disagree within three seconds, you're basically saying, I want you to cross the threshold because I didn't disagree with you. So after about a week, the first, kind of like smoking, or quitting smoking, first three days is the hardest, first week, it's a little bit easier than that, but the first week is going to be the hardest. After usually about a week, the dogs are sitting and lying down and waiting for you to come in, and you're preparing them. And this is also helpful because one of the rules we talked about off camera was not allowing the dogs in the kitchen when we're preparing human food. Well, this is wonderful analog of practicing that when it's their food. So here comes the D-Dog. Okay, so now he has finished all of his food. Now I can go back to, uh, I don't have to block. So see how she's hesitating there? She's not sure she can come in. Or confident, or just I don't care. Um, and if they want to lick each other's bowls, there's no food in there. So it really doesn't matter what they're licking because there's nothing left to guard. These dogs are not resource guards, but some dogs will guard. And if the dog growls when another dog comes close when it's eating, never disagree with that. If I'm in a changing room and somebody tries to come in, I'm going to growl at them in a human way because it's not appropriate for them to come in. For dogs when they're eating, it's not appropriate for another dog to be within seven feet. And when you feed three dogs together, often they eat so fast that so I can eat really fast and I go stand next to his bowl and try to intimidate him and get his food. So by doing it one at a time, you kind of negate all of that. You help them practice self-control. You help them respect the, the authority of their humans because the authority is what's keeping them from coming in, not because I'm standing there. And you're providing the most important resource for them that socially that they find the most appealing. So there's like about five or six really positive things that are going on with this, this adding structure. At first, it'll take you a couple minutes and you'll have to block off your second exit. But eventually, they'll just stay out and they'll go there and you can hiss when they're trying to go there. Again, I wouldn't hiss when any of the dogs were eating and I would just walk towards that particular dog. But the first, for the, until they're really kind of sitting here and being relaxed, don't, put the part, don't take the partition up. And when I do start removing the partition, what I would do is keep it up, make them all move, and when I give the first dog permission to eat, I would have somebody over there quietly remove it. So they're going to be here watching, they're going to be more interested in the food than the violating the perimeter. If they do go around, you have to block it, then you might go back to that partition wall that I talked about moving up and down. All right, well, this is uh, Bucky. That is, uh, why am I blanking on your name? It'll come to me. And that's Daisy. And so, you know, damn, I know it's on the Abby. Abigail. There you go, Abby. Abby, you're a sweetheart. And these are some tips and tricks you can use uh, to help add structure to mealtime to help your dogs respect you and develop a little bit more self-control.